Today's uh, assignment project lesson is about uh, Vermeer's The Kitchen Maid. And I chose this because there are some really simple things in here that make this work really well. That we can, uh, at least if we know about them, we know we can, at some point they're on a file, we can access them um, if we know what we're looking at. So let's take a look. As we first come into the painting, we tend to be drawn from this corner down, and that's mostly because of this dark area against the light. This is the highest contrast, and this is sort of the dividing lines, in a way, between dark, light and dark. Um, so you've got this dark line, this directional line, um, against the lighter background. And then this other, uh, the other directional lines. And when I say directional lines, I mean the, the, the things that move you across the entire picture, across the entire canvas. This goes up and down. This one, across this forearm, comes from here into this picture and across on top of the still life. So there's a, a movement across here. We've got from the top of her head down the arm to the hand on down into the still life. Um, this, we come around, this line brings us right back to her, which brings us into these curves through here. We want to come up here and look at these things and back down again. So we, what we have going on are, is a little, um, uh, a, a, a little bit, a little rhythm of darks that move throughout, um, and the spacings of dark and light that push us where the where the painter wants us to go. He's being the director. Okay, let's take another look. Okay, let's look at how we're going to get started on this painting. Um, I've got three brushes handy: um, a large, bright, a number ten. Um, it's almost the same as a flat, except it's not quite as um, much of a right angle here. This is a short bristled flat. Um, you can see it's pretty, pretty distinct corner. Well, I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, and then I've got a large uh, round. We'll start the painting using a number 10 bright brush, which is almost the same as a flat. Um, using burnt sienna as our under underpainting. Um, again, I'll look for some of these bigger areas, start tying them together. I'll think of this as a unit so far. This right here can be a unit. That's what this is. Her torso, her head that sits in there. Um, again, don't sit it on top, put it in. Um, we're coming down here, we're coming down here, right, this coming over, probably when I have that closer to down here. All right, so we're starting to get some of the basic stuff where we want them. My palette consists of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and titanium white, and a little bit of cadmium red medium. There's very little red in here, but we need it. Um, we'll see why in a minute. Um, okay, our smaller uh, short bristled flat, because we want to start and really um, using our ultramarine start to set in those areas of dark that we're going to develop. So I want to have enough paint and water in my brush that my paint, that my brush flows easily. Now when I'm doing this, um, as I'm adding this arm here, and I'm mostly just doing the shadow part. And there's that big cuff, meets her waistline comes across angles down a little bit where it meets that forearm and this one comes down so as i'm doing these i'm also looking i'm not just looking here where this shadow goes but i'm looking 
glancing up here at this edge and how far I am from the chin and where this is, you know, it's like when you're driving. You're not honestly constantly staring straight ahead. You've got, you're looking at the cross traffic from that lane, from this direction, the pedestrian over there, um, that woman with her kids on the sidewalk. So you're moving around and all those things make a complete picture. So here, as you're, as you're sketching in parts, you kind of, you want to make sure that this edge is in relationship to this and to this. And you do that with your peripheral vision, just like when you're driving. I, th I think that's going to be my new metaphor. So, as I'm going through, I'm picking out shapes. Um, as, you, as you see, there's, it's impo there's, no way, uh, there's no way to differentiate between shape and contrast except to point it out. But when it comes to actually applying it, you can't make contrast without shape. And anytime you put two different marks on, you've got contrast. Um, so, we're using... We're focusing on, on our high contrast areas right now and making shapes to bring those out. Okay, so over here on the tablecloth, for instance, it's a shape to these, and this one has that angle. That's an easy part to overlook, but having looked at the several of the sketches, how important that is, you see how that changed as we went from here to here, it got a little more dynamic, starts to engage this part of the painting a little more. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, I've added a little bit of uh, tone to the background. Uh, we've got a decent green with the ultramarine and um, yellow ochre to get started, but I've also added some sap green and cad yellow so we can see if um, later on we get more specific we'll get we may need those for the right color for now we're going to keep pursuing our two our two main dark colors now are blue and green and since blue is the derivation of I mean green comes from blue, we're going to use, we're going to get a lot of mileage out of our blue. And you can see, now is where we want to start, now, now as we start to get more specific, we'll look at these things, and now this part of her apron it comes from up above on the upper left and kind of swoops down across over and then moves down a little into that forearm and has a bit of a rounded part on this edge. So when we talk about shapes, that's kind of what we're talking about is this, you know, these little parts in here. Now we come down and add, now that we have that where that is, We'll bring in the cuff as it moves around and start to add a little bit of gradation in some of these um, areas. The main thing is that we, once we have something, we can start measuring off of it to make sure that as we move up, we're keeping everything in proportion to each other. All right? that's, how, that's how you do that. You just watch what you're doing. Um, trust me. So, I, as I'm adding um, more of these dark areas, and again, I'm staying on, I'm not going all completely dark, it's about 75%. Um, 
as I'm doing that, I'm also, it's given me another chance to look and see where some of these things happen. What happens right in here, where that sleeve meets that shadow, you know, by, you know, starting to block it in, I'm already looking at what's going to happen up there, where this shadow line is going to be across here. Even if I don't get it in there, I've seen it, all right? Um, all right, so this goes on for a while. I'll come back with a little, when I said it's a little more work done on it. So, at this point, armed with a smaller bristle brush, um, we can start to ask ourselves, what next? So our areas that we need, we know we need to come in with this lighter color through here, uh, finish off our tabletop with that lighter green, flesh tones, especially on the lighter half of her head her face. Uh, we're going to lighten up these areas of her blouse and then the, the pottery. So we've got one, we'll put still life and pottery in the same area. So that's one. Skin tones is two. Um, blouse is three. Blouse and, and skirts. And then this will be five, wherever, wherever we are, four or five. So those are the succession uh, set based on priorities. Um, we want to, that's the succession of what we're going to do. Um, priority wise, um, our most important part is going to be that head. Um, so we're going to wait. So let's block it in. Let's, let's work on it a little more, take it a little further. Then we'll build up the environment that the face exists in because that'll actually be probably one of the last things we do is the touches of the face, but we're not sure yet. It might turn out what we do now is gonna be perfect and all we have to do is paint everything else. We don't know until we do it. Um, so for my color, I'm just gonna use a burnt sienna and white. Um, and again, I'll just keep it Okay, so now we've started to, um, where earlier we were building up the dark areas and creating a pattern and a rhythmic movement through there. Now we're going to come back and punctuate that by, um, we've got most of our middle tones blocked in. We're going to come do the highlight areas um, and see if we can not stumble closer and closer to being done. My paint in the face area is still a little bit wet. I'm going to use in the open acrylics, similar to oil paint in this stage. So I can just bring, I can bring in some white with a little bit of sienna in it and, and just touch into it. Um, when I blend that, it's just coming in a little at a time. And at this point, I'm trying to follow where those lighter areas are. Um, 
here I wanted to get these this light area to really stand out like it does here so I've overloaded with white um, but for now that doesn't need very much more it's kind of rough and awkward but I think that helps to accentuate the, the, um, the tone of the painting because she's a worker. Um, she's used to hard work and this is what we get. Uh, on that blouse, now we'll come with a little bit of, with some white, with um, some ochre and cad yellow in it. bit more base than I wanted it to be. But I'm just, I'm still following where I see that it's lighter, that's where I put it. And I, where it's not, I don't. Um, and that green so that this stays more green than her blouse. I'm going to overdo that tabletop. I'm going to come back with the dark and trim now. I want to make sure now I can play around with getting it the green I want, knowing I'm going to come back and paint out my experimental stages. Yeah, these bands up through here still have some a little more green. We can see a little up there. Um, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's come back. Let's work that blue a little bit. Okay, now let's bring that some modulation into this blue skirt and um, apron she's wearing. So the first thing we want is that movement, but down and back up, down and back up. Um, I think we have enough movement through there if I can carve back in with some darker blue. And for that, I'll use um, ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and a little bit of cadmium. more purple than I want. So there, now we're starting to get a dark, dark, dark. Um, one thing too to notice is how through here, this, this dark moves into this dark. So it, it pulls us up into that arm and here there's no break between the darks. This cuff shape hasn't, doesn't have an edge, and it doesn't have an edge up here as we move into the green. Until we get to the top of that armband, there's no break in that dark, so it just it flows from one part into the other. You can see all these different places where it just moves effortless, effortlessly into the other dark. Uh, that makes our job a lot easier.
for here, I'll just add um, some dark blue, my ultramarine, with a little bit of um, burnt sienna in it. Um, as that may very well be the only two straight lines in the whole painting. All right. Um, I didn't notice that till I got the painting on them, and then it occurred to me that that's why that's one reason that they're important. Um, is not just to occupy this entire quadrant. Um, of the painting, um, yes, it plays a, a it off plays against every, uh, a lot of all these other curves that are happening. Um, okay, all right. Let's paint for a while. 